أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And now بن غفار they're strong غفاري tribes they have a lot of غيرة in this and they were, they were tough people. So he's like, this message has to be spread. I'm going to go in the middle of Mecca. I'm going to go and proclaim La ilaha illallah. And I'm going to give da'wah. Now here, this is a zeal. But da'wah is not given like a rocket that just goes up and then comes down. It takes istiqama. It takes steadfastness. And that's another lesson for us. A practical lesson. The da'wah. It's not just like one day you're like, yes, I'm going to give da'wah and you run around. I don't know that major street here maybe, right? And you're like, la ilaha illallah, Allah is one. You, stop worshipping Jesus. You, stop being an atheist. You. And then by the half hour, you're like, ah, oh, I'm dead. When's the soccer game starting? No, no, no. Da'wah takes years. People think we just started giving da'wah in Balboa Park like a year ago when videos started. No, we've been giving da'wah there for years. I mean, for, at least from the early 2000s, nobody watched the videos, no views, no, no selfies. So what? I still give that one. And if tomorrow, if all you guys hate me, it's okay. I'll still give that one. Huh? May Allah not make it though. Right? You have to be steadfast. You have to have istiqama. You have to move steady for the sake of Allah. But sometimes you're new, you have zeal. So Budar Ghafari, he goes out and he does it. He tells the Quraysh, La ilaha illallah. They attack him from every side. They attack him with shoes that had like metal on the bottom. He had some stuff. And he's alone. And they attack him from every side until his face becomes bloody. The back of his head, the front of his face, nose, he's unconscious and they're still beating him. They're jumping on him. They're kicking him in the head. And here Abbas, radiallahu anhu, the uncle of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa we don't even know if he was Muslim, because we know he became Muslim in secret. Like he used to send the news to Prophet after Hijrah, but Allah alam if he was Muslim at this time or not. But he goes and he protects him. And he tells the people of Quraysh, what are you guys doing? You know, he's from the Ghifar Qabila. And if you kill him, I mean, that's how bad they beat him. It was at the point of death. So if you kill him, then when your tribe, when your, when your caravans go, and you're going to get raided, that past you have is going to be taken away. And one thing Kufar love is money. So they're like, oh yeah, never mind, financial interest. In that case, let's back up off him. Let him live. Now he's injured, beaten, bloody, and life threatening wounds. What do you do now? Khalas, man. Like imagine us today, if may Allah protect us all, let's we're at city center giving da'wah and you get attacked that bad. 30, 40 guys attack you from every side and they're Doc Martin steel toe boots kicking you in the head. And you're bloodied up, busted up in the ER. You live, you're good. What do you do the next day? Give up. Forget it. <laughs> I tried. Look at this. Nobody helped me out, man. Where's everybody else at? Where's the rest of the Muslims at, man? What did Abu Dhar Ghafari do the next day? Exact same thing. Went out. Mushrikeen of Quraysh. La ilaha illallah. Gangster. <laughs> right? So, he got attacked again. He was... Hit from every side. They attacked him again. Abbas Rajan saved him again. Third day, same thing. After that, the Prophet ﷺ told him, Look, this is not going to help you any. It's not the way. Go back to your people. And go and teach them about Islam. And he, he went back, like to Fir bin Amr al Dawsi. He went to his people. And he called them towards Tuhi. He called them towards Allah. He did da'wah amongst his people. Until all of them came to Islam. Slowly, not in one night. It took time. 
to my respected brothers in Islam, the point here is the Sahaba, and the Salaf of this Ummah, they were patient in da'wah. They used the Quran and Ahadith, meaning when they would talk about that the Prophet ﷺ said this, said that, when you tell it, that's Hadith. They would recite the Quran, they would tell the people about the beauty of the Quran. At that time, what touched the people was the linguistics of it. The Bedouins and the Arabs who knew Arabic really well, when they heard the Quran, they, they heard the linguistic miracle. Today, it may be difficult, like we go to some Englishman, and you start telling him about يعني, Balagha, you talk about Taqdeem wa Ta'akhir, and you start talking about يعني, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Kutiba alaykum as siyam and not Kataba Allahu alaykum and how this is such baligh and it teaches you that only Allah has the right to ordain it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But when we talk about things in the Quran that the Prophet ﷺ could not have known and science figured out later, it shows from the miracle of the Quran. When you talk about prophecies that are in the Quran or hadith that came true one after the other, this is, this is giving da'wah from the Quran. When you talk about themselves and the environment and the universe and how it's made, the Quran tells us to ponder upon these things and to give da'wah upon these. That was the way, the way they gave da'wah. They didn't go and start learning the uh, ways of the Romans and Greeks and Hindus and try to use that. No, Quran and Hadith, beautiful da'wah with patience. Abu Dar Ghafari radiyanhu, when he went and he was attacked and when he went back to his people, he didn't tell the Prophet salam, that you have to now compensate me for the attack. You have to pay me for my travels. You have to now go and uh, give me funding so that I can not work and I can just go and do da'wah to my people. No. Yes, Ali radiyan hosted him. Like the people, may Allah reward all the brothers here in the UK that have hosted us. And have spent their time and money, and uh, yani, may Allah give them the ajr for it. Well, I didn't ask for, nor did I accept a single penny or a single cent for my time here. Nor will I. Why? Because I look at the Salaf, I look at the Sahaba, that's how their da'wah was. They spent their own time. The people who made hijrah, they made hijrah with their own selves, they sacrificed. The Ansar, which is you. Yes, they hosted them. Yes, they helped them. But each one sacrificed from their own selves, their own wealth, their own time, put their lives at risk. And then the Hidayah spread. Today we have taken the, the business models of Kuffar and we think. مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا